Welcome back, puppies, to Barking Dog Studio presents Claris and Velcor Part 2. Here I'm attempting to paint her eyes. Or her eye, actually. With her face turned, you only see one eye. Only one is exposed, the other one's buried in her hair and uh, hood of her cloak. And here I've got some goblin green from the game color line. I'm giving her a green iris. What happens? I didn't like the way it looked, so I just painted over it. And now I'm coming back in with the green again. Just a slight touch with some black there for her pupil, and we're done. Okay, here I'm just adding some highlights to her face. I'm highlighting her nose and her chin. And I'm highlighting her nose and her chin with some P3 paint. It would be, uh... Ren Flesh. Now I've got the Reaper Blonde Triad that I will be using for her hair, and that was the Blonde Shadow. Here we are with some Minoth white highlight, and I'm highlighting her outfit, the white part of it. And for this, I'm really just hitting the areas that light would land on. I'm trying to bring those out a little bit more so they have a little bit more dimension. One of the things that's really interesting about Claris is that the sculptor really added a lot of uh, wrinkles and folds in her fabric, which I think kind of gives the miniature some character. And I think there what you saw was I was showing some uh, scale color paints from the fantasy line, and I'm painting up her coin pouch and the scale colors have become some of my favorite paints take a real quick look here at the paints that I use for painting her coin pouch if I could 
find it. It was despair green, and then I used for a highlight a little bit of uh, kind of an undead flesh. I don't know. I take that back. I might have used the hellbound flesh, lighten it up, and use it for the wrinkles on the coin pouch. There's where it was raised a little bit, and now I'm doing her boat boots. Yeah, I'm doing her boats. Boats on her feet. For her boots, I used some model color from Vallejo. I used camo black brown for the base, and then I used leather brown for the midtone. And I use the same color combination for her gloves as well. And it was also the same color combination I used for the strap on her Morning Star. You know, she has one of those straps that you're meant to slide your hand through just to keep it from uh, dropping to the ground if it falls out of your grip or if you lose your grip on it. Not that it's run through her hand, but it's just dangling over there on the side of the uh, handle to the Morning Star. But I used the same two browns for painting it. Alright, some more scare, scale colors. Uh, two of my favorite colors right there, and I really like mixing those for purple. And this will be the uh, rest of her kind of cleric vestments, if you will, her outfit that she's wearing. It will be her cloak and whatever that part of the vestments is that's kind of on the outside that kind of hangs down on the front. And it's got a hole for your head and neck, and it hangs down over your back. I'm at a loss for that terminology or that jargon for that uh, part of an outfit. Now those two scale colors that you see me use in there showing are uh, blood fest blood fest crimson and brain eater azure and I will mix the two together to get a deeper redder purple that I use for the base and then I'll mix in a little bit more of the purple to get a mid-tone and then for the straight highlight, I use just the purple, which is the Brain Eater Azure. Sorry for being off camera there. One of the things I like about the scale colors is that they're a very rich paint without being really thick. Like I have some army color paints that are very rich 
that I like, but they're very thick, very hard to mix up as a result of that. Uh, but I haven't had any of those issues with the scale color uh, fantasy games paints that I have. They're very rich, very creamy. Uh, they don't take a whole lot of you know mixing up, mixing up to get the pigment and the the medium mixed up good before you squirt them out on a palette. Uh, for several years, I've been a big fan of Vallejo, even though I use like a lot of P3 and a lot of Reaper and some of the Army uh, paints. I even have some Badger miniature miniature paints, but the scale color have definitely kind of won me over. I will definitely be picking up some more in the future. They probably replaced Vallejo for my number one kind of go-to paint that I actually kind of get almost excited, you know, about using. Again, I apologize for painting off camera. Claris was a blast to paint. I think in the future I want to pick up some more Star Hat miniatures. I was just reading their about section over at their website, and the sculptor doesn't really cite the era. Uh, he looks to be about my age. He looks to be about middle age, and he just says that you know he started sculpting miniatures that were along those lines of the same ones he had when he was younger and started playing. And I'm pretty sure that would probably be like 80s. And that's definitely the style that uh, the miniatures have. There's some good detail there. And like I, I mentioned before, on her and her outfit, I really like all the folds and wrinkles in it. It really gives the miniature some character. But they definitely have this very old school vibe to them. And here, as mentioned, I'm just going kind of with a mid-toner highlight. I'm going with a little less red. So it's bringing out the purple more. A little more closer to the blue spectrum for a mid-tone and then a highlight. Here we got some military shader, and this is uh, Velcar. You see me spend quite a bit of time painting up uh, Claris. Now, for the paint job that's already on him, I just did it with an airbrush. Uh, the prime job was already kind of zenithal, so I already had the shading and the highlighting 
in mid tone. So here I'm just slapping him with a uh, really good wash from Army Painter, their military shader, which is a a green. They've got a green shade, and then they've got this military shader. It's a kind of a different shade of green. It's kind of that uh, army flat green. And I'm just giving him a good uh, good wash in that. some Ren Flesh. I actually don't stick to this paint scheme that I was going with. I was putting some on the palette and then I thin it down with some water so I get a glaze. And then I used it on the eye stalks. But I ended up not liking it and I ended up uh, actually using a different color on his eye stalks. So what you see me here isn't what I end up going with. But I went ahead and left this in just to show that, you know, sometimes you can start with a paint scheme, decide you don't like it, and it's just paint. Especially if it's a, a thin coat like this, just paint over it. Good to go. I mean, you don't have to restrip the model. What I end up actually doing for his eye stalks is going over with a uh, glaze of that Brain Eater Azure. And again, I use some of the Blood Fest Crimson uh, to give uh, the flesh in certain areas kind of that reddish hue that flesh tones will sometimes have. Where blood is flowing closer to the surface. Uh, I use that around uh, his eye on the eyelid and then in some of the parts of the eye stalk where they were kind of bending where they're curved at there or where they're flexing like in the joints of the eye stalks if you will. But again that will come later. I think here all you see me doing is just slapping on that uh, flesh tone I just ended up not really, not really liking it. it didn't uh, didn't really stick out enough to me. I guess I don't know. It didn't really look beholdery enough. I don't know. Just didn't sit right. But again, that's one of the wonderful things about it. it's just paint. If you don't like what you see, if you don't like what you've done, just paint over it. Thanks, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bark on, puppies.